Hi there, and welcome to Rheinland episode number 11. Do you see this? And this? Mm. I bought two broken FP8 digital pianos with the goal of making one working FP8 digital piano out of it. I succeeded in this, but it was a bit more work than I anticipated. Discovering leaky caps in the audio output and repairing that was the easy part. The heavy lifting, and I mean that literally, was the key bit repair. The FP8 introduced in 1991 uses the Matsushita PA488 key bit. This is also used in the RD500 introduced in 1994. Um, it was improved and called the PA4 a88 and further used in some HP home pianos, the like the KR370, the RD600, so we're in 1997 now, and A90. Before Roland started using the PHA, that's Progressive Hammer, keybed in the RD700 in 2001, I think. Uh, if you have an earlier model that uses the PHA keybed, let me know in the comments. Note that all of the above were marketed as lightweight in the marketing material. Lightweight, being like 26 kilos, that's 57 pounds for the imperial inclined minority of this world. Is this heavy? Oof. Why so heavy? Well, it's a full metal construction. Look at the thickness of the metal plating on the FP8. And the keybit itself is a thick metal frame with a lot of metal hammer weight in them. But enough about how much it weighs. Let's jump to the main problem. Roland made a big construction mistake. These hammers are constructed in a way that makes them prone to breaking. Uh, here on the left you see a okay-ish hammer, and on the right an almost broken one. Note the fractures shown here. So why does it break exactly there? Well, if you look at the mechanics of one key and the associated hammer, you will see that the part of the hammer thumps hard back on the felt strip every time the key is released. Apparently the part of the hammer is not strong enough to withstand this stress, and after a couple of years of playing, it breaks. And that is why you see numerous videos about how to repair or exchange these hammers on YouTube. Roland? Really? Well, Roland did learn and I believe that after the introduction of the PHA keybed, this failure mode was finally resolved. Anyhow, let's do this. Take two FP8s and make one working out of it. I will first repair the analog output section. The leaking caps as seen here caused the output volume to be too low. And I also discovered that the volume slider was not working anymore, so I had to replace that one as well. While I was at it, I also replaced the tactile switches. The caps on the power supply and the amplifier board were just fine, so I left them untouched. And then came the keybit repair. The big thing here was that the hammers that were on their way to breaking caused a clunk sound when released, as you can hear here. I marked them and had to replace all the involved hammers. Here having two FP8s was really handy because I took the working hammers from the white FP8 and installed them in the grey FP8 keypad. And after that I have a working FP8, the grey one, and a scrap FP8, the white one. This one is going to the scrap metal dealer. So much metal in it. So without further ado, let's do it!
was the broken one. This is the okay one, but it doesn't fit. It's so what I'm going to do is to transplant this stem to this. You look very carefully. See that? They did not tighten the screws when they removed it, and of course they have put a different screw in there that doesn't belong here. But all the mess. <laughs> <laughs> 